Hi, my name is Ben, and welcome back to another 3D printing guide. This time, we're going to be taking a look at 3D printed cookie cutters. This is a step-by-step -step beginner guide, brought to you by the Lebanon Public Library. Here's the overview of what we're going to be doing today. All the software that we're using is free and accessible online. We're going to go over first how to find images. This can include picking images that will work, and I have a few examples that will work, and we'll look over some that won't work for making cookie cutters. After we pick our images, we need to do something called converting it into an SVG file, which is Scalable Vector Graphic. This is the same type of technology that's used in things like wood carving, silhouette machines, and cricket machines, if you've ever seen those before. Our goal is to make an outline which will serve as our cookie cutter. After we do that, we're going to do some very light modeling in Tinkercad in order to make our cookie cutter. This is how we're going to determine how big or small or how deep our cookie cutter will be. We'll go to all of this in step-by-step -step details, so don't let that overwhelm you. Finally, you'll get a chance to pick out your color and have your creation brought to life. If I have one recommendation for you, it's to start simple, especially if you've never done this before. All right, does anybody want to give a guess as to which this cookie cutter is from? If you guessed Eevee from Pokemon, you are right. So this is kind of an example of what you can expect to make by the end of this video when you have it 3D printed. Uh, for the purposes of the illustrations, we're going to be using this design here, and I'm going to be recreating it so you can see how it's been made step by step through the process. Here's a look at some of the supplies that you're going to need today. Obviously, you're going to need a computer with internet access. We're also going to need to find a photo, but we'll go over that here in a moment. If you want to go ahead and head over to Tinkercad.com, you can go ahead and create a free account for yourself. We're also going to be using a software called Inkscape, which is what we're going to be using to create our SVG files, which are essentially outlines of images that we want to turn into cookie cutters. Alrighty, so when you're selecting your photo, there's a million and one ways to find a photo on the internet. Uh, and there's just as many ways to edit them as well. So just for simplicity's sake, we're going to begin with the easiest way to do this, since this is a beginner's guide. And we're going to be trying to find something called a PNG file to turn into a cookie cutter. And there's a couple of reasons that we use a PNG file. One is because they typically have more neutral backgrounds that we can edit, and it makes our editing a little bit uh, easier to do. Uh, so where can you find these PNG files at? Um, Google Images is probably the most universally well known one. It's probably the easiest one to find them at, but there's also free image sharing sites such as Pixabay, PNG Tree, Clean PNG. Um, for, for the purposes of this video, we're going to be using Google Images to find it. Uh, when we're looking for our images, uh, we're going to try to find one with a neutral background. So if you look on here on the right, we have uh, Google Images, and we have two different ones. One of them is a uh, completely white background. The other one has kind of a checkerboard look to it. Uh, both of those are fine, as long as it is a neutral background or it's contrasting uh, to the the value and I'll show you what that looks like when we go through that with some examples. Uh, if there is no background that's better um, but just try to find one that is uh, as neutral as possible and also try not to find one that is too complex. Um, whenever you get into too complex backgrounds uh, it really causes these cookie cutters to not turn out as well as they could without you know very heavy editing. All right, here I am. I'm on Google Images right here. And if you can see what I did at the top, I searched for what we wanted, which was Eevee. And if you look on the right-hand side, there's a button that says Tools. And if you click Tools, it will give you some drop-down options. One of those drop-down options you can see I've circled in red here, it says Line Drawing. When you do this, this is going to find other PNG files or similar type files that are the outlines of images. And these are really the best ones to do because it's already done a lot of the hard work for us. Another way that we can do this is we can search for our subject that we want. This time I did Pikachu, and I put PNG in the search field after that. Uh, you can also go over to tools, just like we did with the EV when I did line drawings, but this time I pressed clip art when I did it. And a lot of these are nice because they have nice, clean backgrounds. They usually don't have a lot of busy stuff that's happening in the background. It's usually gray or checkerboarded or it is white. Um, and remember, we don't want a messy background. A messy background makes for a bad cookie cutter. In the most thorough way, if you wanted to do this, there's actually a way that you can search for advanced image search in Google, where you can put in actual specifications as to the file types that you want. Um, all I did is I searched advanced Google's images. If you click here, you can type in what you want, for example, Eevee. Down here at the bottom, you'll see there's one that says file type. If you click that, you can click PNG files, and from there you can press advanced search. And here you can see that all of these that have been generated are PNG files. Here's a few examples of files that would work well. Can anybody tell me why these pictures would work well? Take a moment and look at it. These images work well because they have dark outlines with white backgrounds and the images are not overly complex. 
These are great candidates that we can put into an image processor like Inkscape and have them outlined to which we can turn into a cookie cutter. Here's the opposite of the type of photos that we don't want to use or will not work well. Take a close look and see if you see anything wrong with these photos. Aside from having busy backgrounds, these photos are also quite fuzzy and re low resolution. The one in the top left, the live action role play, actually will be very difficult to outline and it'll look kind of strange when it comes out. Try to stay away from photos that are low quality or have very busy backgrounds because these will take a lot of work to turn into a good cookie cutter. A few things to remember. Complex images equal bad cookie cutters. There needs to be some room and contrast within the cutter and this will be explained later. Start simple. If you're not sure, pick something that you know will work. Start as simple as you possibly can and pick more than one PNG file or image that you found, especially when you're first learning. So what's going on here? Let's take a look at where we're at in the process. So far, we've been talking about our PNG file, which is in the far left of the screen. And then what we need to do now is we need to take that image that we found and convert it into an SVG file, which is a scalable vector graphic. This is essentially a black and white outline of an object that we can convert into an STL, which is a 3D printed file. Here's an illustration of what's happening. On the far left, we have our image that we found, our EV, our PNG file. The next step that we're about to do is we're going to trace EV and only do the outside lines of EV, uh, both on the detail layers and the very outside edge of EV. And finally, we're going to put that outlined edge, we're going to put it into Tinkercad, and we're going to create our 3D dimensional cookie cutter. Here's a couple other examples of SVG files. Remember, SVG files are basically black and white photos. And for our purposes, the outlined border on the very outer shape will be used to create a cookie cutter. Let's jump into Inkscape. Inkscape is a free and available online download for you to use to manipulate objects. After you've searched for the image that you want, go ahead and right click on the image, go down to where it says save as, left click. From here, we need to make sure under save as type that it says PNG file. If it says something like JPEG or any other file type, it may still work. Um, I just asked for PNG because it makes it a little bit simpler for cleaning up files. But go ahead and press save in a place that you can remember, for example, the desktop. And you have your image to begin manipulating. Okay, so here I am on my desktop and we have installed Inkscape and I have my photo of my EV, my EV PNG file. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new folder so that I can keep all of my stuff in one spot and not have to hunt for it. I'm just going to call this folder EV and I'm going to drag my EV into it. Next I'm going to open up Inkscape and there's a button that's at the bottom that says to load. I'm going to press that and it's saying what do you want to load? I'm going to open our EV file and there's our EV, I'm gonna press open. It's gonna ask you if you wanna change any of the import images, we're not going to, we're just gonna tell that okay. Great, and here is our EV. But what we need to do if you look at this image is there is a definitive outline around this EV. And that's what we need to capture is the outlined images of this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna left click our EV and this highlights it. And you can see that there's little arrows on the side and that knows that's how we know that it's highlighted. Up here at the top, if you click path and go to trace bitmap, which is telling Inkscape to trace the image of Eevee, you can see in the bottom right, there's a preview here, but you can see there's a little bit too much black in here. We want just the lines of it. And there's a button and a slider up here at the top called threshold, and you can slide this back and forth. Now that looks bad, but let's see if we can go to the left here kind of get it how we want it. There we go, right there. That looks perfect. Maybe a little less. There we go. Perfect. And if you press apply, it's going to look like it does nothing, but it's actually hidden underneath your color image. So if you left click your color image and move it, you can see we now have an outline traced shape of Eevee. Go ahead and click on the colored image and press delete. And now what we're doing is we're only working with the outside image of it. Go ahead and left click. This highlights and tells it that we need to manipulate it. Go up here to where it says object. Under object, there's a button that says fill and stroke. Click fill and stroke. From here, click stroke paint and click this first one that says full. 
click on stroke style. And from here, what we can do is we can change how thick the lines are. So let's take a look and see what three millimeters looks like and press enter. You can see what this does is it makes it a little bit more bold. And this is good because we don't want our lines to be too thin when we have our cookie cutter. Otherwise, when we press down on our cutter, the object will break. I found three millimeters is a really good size to have for our beginning cookie cutter. Let's say that we're good with this. What we can do is we can press file, export. And this is the important part. On the left-hand side, it says, it thinks that we still want a PNG because that's what we started with. We don't. We need something called an SVG here which is a scalable vector graphic. Go ahead and click that. Click this folder here, which is asking where we wanna put our object. We wanna put it inside the EV folder. And we're just gonna rename this to something we know. EV SVG. And it says PNG here, so I'm hoping that it's not gonna change that. Um, sometimes it can get kind of strange. So I'm just gonna come back here, SVG and press export. I'm gonna minimize this here open up our EV and I'm going to double click this and hopefully this is an SVG file and you can see that it is. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how a cookie cutter works. Um, so there's different types of cookie cutters, but we're trying to make a three layer cookie cutter. So there is the outermost layer. This is gonna be your tallest layer and what actually cuts the cookie from the rest of the dough. Um, you can see in this shape here, it is the widest one. It is the one that goes all around the outside of our EV. The next layer is called the middle layer, which is gonna be our detail layer. This is the impression that it's about half the height of the outside layer. So it's not so thick that it'll actually cut through the dough all the way, but it's thick enough to where it will leave an impression on the cookie. And then last there's the handle, which goes across the very back of the cookie cutter. This is usually very thin and it's used to do things like hold images in place or to give yourself a place to push when you're pushing on the cookie cutter. Here's that same information, but kind of repeated with a more visual breakdown. The image on the left is the actual cutter. It's the outermost and it's the thickest, and it's actually used what is to cut the dough from the rest of it. It's the separating part of the cookie cutter. The next image is gonna be the detail layer. And as you can see, it's not nearly as tall as the outside one. So it's a kind of a medium height that allows the impression to be deep enough to leave detail, but not actually cut up the pieces of the, of the cookie cutter. Um, and then there's the handles, and you can see the handles have been separated from it, and, but in the final one, they're placed in strategic areas that will allow you to kind of have the strongest cookie cutter possible. And then the right is the assembled cookie cutter, and you can see from the bottom right image the different varying depths that we've put to give a good impression within it. Here's a zoomed up version of the outmost layer, the cutter layer, and I recommend about 15 millimeters of depth for this one here. Here's the middle layer, our detail layer. And on this one, I recommend around 10 millimeters of depth. You can experiment with this depending on what type of cookie and dough you're using, but 10 is a good universal number. Here are the handles, and these need to be pretty thin. So I set mine to three millimeters when I created my handles. And of course, here is the assembled one with the handles, the cutter, and the detail layer, as well as the side-by-side -side view. One last thing to consider too, keep in mind that whenever you create your cookie cutters, they will be mirrored from the final image. And that might not seem like an issue to you if it's something like EV where it's left or right, but adding things like names or numbers could look really weird when they come out wrong and backwards. So that is something to consider that you will have to mirror your image. And I can show you how to do that when our next step within Tinkercad. When we're making handles and we're putting them on in Tinkercad, I just want to really reinforce the purposes of putting a handle on. Not only is it a place that we can use to press on an object to make sure that it's nice and uniform when we get a good cut, but it's also something that we can use to hold pieces that are very small together. When something is 3D printed, everything has to touch. And if it doesn't touch, when we take it off of the 3D printer, it'll simply fall apart and go everywhere. So look at this image here. Do you see anything that's not touching the main body? Where would you put the handles? If we didn't put any handles on it, this is what we would get. It's kind of cute looking, but well, Evie lost her face. So this is the areas that we're trying to target in order to get our cookie cutter to stay in one piece. If you notice the ears are not touching the main body of the silhouette. Neither is the eyes, the eyebrows, the nose, or the mouth. 
So we have to put something there to connect it all into one piece, which is where our handle comes into play. And here you can see if we didn't use any handles at all on the left, and if we decided to strategically place handles on the right, this isn't too hard, and I'll show you how to do it here in a moment. Okay, so I'm on Tinkercad.com, and this is where we're going to import our SVG file, or the outline that we made at Inkscape, and we're going to make our cookie cutter. So let's go ahead and I'm going to press New, and I want a new 3D design. Perfect. So when we come up here, the first thing that we need to do is we need to give this a change name. And we need to call it something other than Brilliant Fluffy Bruticus. And name it something that's a little more uh, indicative of what it is. So we're just going to call this EV Cookie Cutter. Excellent. Left click onto the screen. If you've never done this before, you might want to take a moment to kind of familiarize yourself with how to navigate in Tinkercad. If you hold down the right mouse button, you can kind of pan. And when, after we import it, you can hold down the left mouse button to move objects around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press import, choose a file, and I'm going to go back to my desktop, our EV folder, and this is the only one that's letting us do, so it has to be our SVG file. There's EV, import, and this might take several minutes, so I'm going to pause the video. All right, here's our EV, but our EV is really, really big. So um, this would be like a huge, this is like a pizza pie cookie cutter. So we need something that's a little better. So I'm going to make a large cookie cutter, but I need to see what I want it to be. So there's multiple ways to do this. It is in millimeters, and there's a way to change that. So I'm going to do a quick search, and I'm going to go inches to millimeters. I want mine to be around, uh, I'd say 4.5 inches or so. So 114.3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on our Eevee here. And I'm going to left click and hold down shift and click this. And I'm going to change this just roughly to 120. Let's see what our Eevee looks like here. There we go, much better. So I'm going to left click and drag my Eevee back onto the build plate so we can see what we're working with. Good deal. Awesome. So now what we need to do is we need to make three different layers, right? So we need to have our outside layer, we need to have our detail layer, and we have to have our handles. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna hold down, I'm gonna left click to select, hold down control and press C one time. And what that does is that tells my computer to make a copy. I'm gonna hold down control and press V and it's gonna make a paste. So now I have two copies of this. On this one here, I'm gonna left click, there's a button that says fill mode over here, and I want the outside line only. And the nice thing about Tinkercad is it knows that. So now look at that. We have our outside line. And I'm actually going to increase this here just a little bit. Maybe, let's just try maybe 10. Let's guess of 10. That looks good there. Awesome. So what we need to do now is we need to change our depths. And the easiest way to do this is to look really low so that we can see it. And it's if you left click on each one, you'll see that there's a dot that's in the middle. It's a little square. That is asking how tall we want our cookie cutter to be. And we wanted the outside one to be 15. So if you left click, it'll turn red, which means you can type in the box, 15. I'm gonna left click on the detail layer. And we said that one's gonna be 10, center. I'm gonna pan back up. And there they are. So let's go ahead and we're going to align now. So I'm going to hold down my left mouse button to make a square. And what this is going to do is it's going to highlight everything. There's a button at the top that says align. I'm going to go ahead and press this button that says align. And I need to align it in two different spots in the middle and also on the height. And I'm going to left click off. And what that does is it creates our cookie cutter. But we're not done yet. Remember, if we didn't do this, if we just printed it without any type of handle on it, Eevee's face would fall off. So we need to do something to keep Eevee's face on here. So I'm going to start with a small cylinder here. Now this cylinder is really tall, and I need this to be a little bit smaller. And remember, these are not supposed to be on the final cookie, so we need to make sure that they're thin enough to actually fit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this to 3 and press Enter. And I'm going to pan back up and I'm going to left click and hold it. I'm going to put this 
somewhere that's connecting. So if I drag that right there, you can see it connects the ear to the body, the eyebrow, and the eye. Just like we did before, if you hold down control and press C while looking at the circle, I can press V and make a copy of it. And I'm gonna do the same thing for over here. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the mouth on here. And let's put it right there. You do wanna leave a little bit of a gap so that you don't create a, uh, a cavity to where the dough won't come out. It'll be hard for you to clean. Now, the nose is a little harder to get to. For that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take a square. I'm gonna lower it to three. I'm gonna make it really thin. I'm gonna guess around five, and this is a guess. And I'm gonna drag it out. And I'm gonna see if we can line it up right. There we go. Now this looks a little uh, juxtaposed and I want it to look a little cleaner. So I'm gonna drag it to where it's inside of the block here. There we go. Let's look at the other side. Left click, drag it in, perfect. And from here you can see almost everything is connected. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take a couple copies of this because I want more places to be able to press on this. I'm gonna do one up on the ears. Copy, uh-oh. And I'll do one across the chest down here. And I'm gonna pull it into the body. Pull it into the body. Let's see, that one needs to go in a little bit. How about this one up here? Same thing, needs to go in just a little bit. Perfect. Alrighty, there's a button here that says orthographic view, which you can click. And what that does is it will give you a straight top-down image of what you're looking at. And as you can see, I'm gonna look and double check, make sure that there's nothing that I'm missing. The mouth is connected, the eyebrows and eyes, the nose, and the ears. I think everything is connected. So what we need to do is we need to highlight everything with a box. And there's a button up here that says group, and we need to press it. It's control G or group. And what that does is it tells Tinkercad to make this one solid object. And as you can see, there is our digital cookie cutter that we've made. And you can see it has varying depths when we look at it. We have our outside layer, which is the tallest. We have our middle detail layer. And in the back, you can see we have our little handles that are holding our pieces together and gives us a place to push. If we're ready for it, we can go ahead and we can press export. And you always want to export this as an STL file. This is the file type that we need to be able to communicate with the 3D printer. So go ahead and press STL. It'll probably put it in your download directory, but it's a good idea to add this over to your EV file whenever you're done. This is the file that you'll bring into the library to have 3D printed. There it is. Click, show in folder, right click, copy, I'm gonna go back to my desktop and I'm gonna click on my EV folder, right click, paste. And there is our EV cookie cutter that we've made ready to be 3D printed. Alrighty, one of the things I did mention before was that your cookie cutter will be mirrored in the final outline of it. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna just pull something that's in here just as an example to show you what it would look like. So let's just say that this is our text that we've put on here. Let's just say one, two, three, Ben. When we go to create this and we put this impression into the cookie cutter, it actually will, it will be backwards. So what we need to do is there is an option that's up at the top here called mirror. So we can select our object here, press mirror, and it's asking how you want to flip it and we want it to be back and forth. So we can click this. And what it will do is we'll put it to be the opposite because whenever we press into the cookie, it'll actually come out the right way. Um, I know that that's something that, we, that may or may not be applicable to you, but it's something to consider, especially if you use things like words or numbers. I wanna thank you for watching this guide today. On the screen, you see a couple additional resources that I've included if you wanna continue this journey and learn some other things. Obviously, there's our 3D guides that we release from time to time, but if you're looking to create your own creations or take some of the lessons on Tinkercad, it's a good place to start to kind of gain that uh, three-dimensional um, 
uh, perspectives that you need to kind of navigate the 3D printing world. Uh, Thingiverse, if you've never been there, oh, what a wonderful site it is. It's a really good place to go to see what other people have created. And often these downloads are free and you can bring them into the library and have them 3D printed. Your library card actually comes with LinkedIn Learning, which is a self-guided course, and it's available through the Lebanon Public Library databases. It's free. All you need is your library card number, and there are lots of different classes you can take, even things outside of 3D printing. And then finally, there's always YouTube, but keep in mind, as great as it is, it is community driven, so there may be good or bad information, but some of the best, most condensed courses I've ever taken have been through there. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you soon.